I met Duke Dijon, who was the uh, owner and founder of Dijon's Olympia Brass Band, brass band back in the uh, 70s, very popular. And um, we worked out a deal with him where he would come out, he'd come to the airport when we would be, be meeting the band that was going to be performing that weekend, and um, uh, he, he'd be standing off, and as soon as I saw him get off the plane, I'd kind of nod and you know, point to him and he would just go greet them right when they were getting off the plane and took them, marched them through the entire airport. Just people would go crazy and the bands would go crazy, especially the British bands. The British invasion of the Pink Floyds and the Rod Stewart's and Humble Pies and Emerson Lake, Emerson Lake and Palmer and on and on and on. One time with uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer, who flew in on their own jet and they landed at the lakefront airport, they would, they came out there as well and did the same thing. They didn't have the same, I mean, it was fun to the band, but it was, there was nobody around. Like at, in, at the municipal, I mean, Moisana Airport, Louis Armstrong Airport now, and, um, uh, and disrupting it, particularly when it was tons of people that had no idea who was going through, no, no. Another fun thing we did, and I'm going to give Brian and Fox credit, 100% credit for, for coming up with this idea. We went out and bought two used limos. Uh, and then whoever was available to go pick the van up would go pick the van up. And then the rest of the time, we just parked them if somebody needed them. We let them borrow it or whatever. I mean, it was like that was it. And so it was no big, new, swanky, big-time, fancy limousine. And they may have looked at it kind of strange when a group was first getting in them, but once they realized and, and they met, because we always had somebody on picking them up. The, um, the second thing was, and I'll never forget this forever, was, you know, like I said earlier in the rider, they always wanted this kind of food or that kind of food or this or that or whatnot. And we had a gentleman that worked for us by the name of Willie Bowser. And, um, Willie was this African American gentleman that was, you know, we were in our 20s, so Willie must have been in his 40s, I'm thinking. But he's the one that really kept the place spotless as far as, you know, I mean, it was clean, but those, those carpets, and I'll tell you about those carpets in a minute, but those carpets got a little funky every once in a while, but Willie kept the place clean, and, and but what Willie also did was, he was our security, he was our cleaning man, inside security, clean man, but, but the most important thing Willie did was he and his family cooked red beans and rice for every all the groups that would come in there. So if they wanted the caviar, they wanted this or wanted that, he said, yeah, fine. They, they could have you can have what you want, but here's what you get it. <laughs> so and and they you know no one really said anything. But once they ate it, they loved it. They loved it. When people would come back, they want to know, is Willie here? We're going to have that food from Willie in the spring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They loved that.